Okay, I don't normally talk about digital circus, but this is certainly something. Let's be honest, I couldn't care less about this show. I even forgot that the episode was gonna be out on October 4th, but I have heard good stuff about it, so I decided to watch it, and honestly, it's something interesting. Okay, this video will be a little different. Instead of just going over the positives and negatives of the episode, I'm gonna go over the whole episode and say what I think about each thing, because I honestly don't have a lot to say. So spoiler warning I guess. So the episode starts off with Pomni trying to hold her breath or something because they wanted to see her body's reaction to that and her reaction was turning into an RGB gaming mouse and they mentioned that Kangaroo glows when he holds his breath too. Remember that kids? And oh yeah Jax breaks the fourth wall. What do you the viewers think it is? I mean honestly that fourth wall break was really unnecessary in my opinion it just felt forced for some reason then they go into the adventure and ooh spoopy mansion I like the environment here honestly it looks cool and reminds me of Luigi's mansion and um yeah th this scary ghost appears and uh they love eyes uh, popping in this episode for some reason at least they are exploring the weird nature of the environment I guess and that's something I can give them which is good then the scary ghost is cute all of a sudden <laughs> So it is Luigi's Mansion. We have two doors, the normal one and the scary one. Rated up for mature Zoobles only. Rated up for everyone dies. Then the most sane duo go in the scary door. But I mean honestly, they did a pretty good job with the horror scenes here. They're not the scary jump scares type or anything. It's just uncanny because of how weird these creatures look. And then we cut to therapist Kane trying to understand why Zobel hates the adventures, which Finally some more Zoopal screen time where we kinda see her real personality for a bit and some Kane development too instead of only being the man behind the adventures and that's it. Also an attention span joke. And then we go back to the most sane duo experiencing some nightmare fuel with scary versions of their faces and a creature face coming straight out of a Resident Evil game and looks like this abomination. Can you spot the difference? Then they go with the tapes trope where there's a person who had recorded their diaries in this mansion which is cool, don't get me wrong, but I think it is kind of cliche, I don't know. Coming from someone who played a lot of games and watched a lot of shows as the same trope, so I don't know. But it is fine I guess. Then they try to escape, then they explore more and more and we see another tape in another room. The guys talk a lot about the horrors of the mansion and how strong or scary that resident evil creature with the head is and says that you should not get your eyes off of it. Wow. This is some rather inconvenient lore placement. Then the room turns dark and I like the 2D animated eyes honestly. They're pretty creative instead of just having the 3D eyes pop up. I like this addition a lot. What was that? Was that you? No. Oh, wait. You mean me grabbing you right now? Yeah, that was me. Then they make jokes about the cliche, oh someone had touched me in the dark, was it you type of thing, I didn't know what to call it. Oh wait, I should rephrase that. No, the don't. But the scenes kinda drags on for a bit too long, honestly. Though it makes the viewer more comfortable in this place, but it still dragged on for too long. But then we get tiny jump scare or something with this Resident Evil head that looks like ambush from doors now. I'm not gonna lie, it is kind of scary with all the teeth and stuff. Some pretty good improvements to the horror, I really like it honestly. Then that creature is chasing them down and the key drops inconveniently while King Gears staring at those beautiful Hollywood smile teeth. You might have not noticed this, but Kinger is staring at those eyes inside of the creature's mouth because it reminds him of his wife as he talks about her later. You look beautiful, honey. I mean, there's definitely some improvements in the storytelling, honestly. I'm really happy for that. And then we cut to Kane and Zubal again having a hated discussion and Zubal talks about her personal problem that is that she cannot find a body that suits her at all and and all the swap parts do not appeal to her. And that's why you don't give kids everything they want as a child, dear parents. 
And yeah, again, finally some more deep dive into the world of the digital circuits because honestly, it was really flat in my opinion. And yeah, the AI is getting scary good at having emotions and stuff. Oh my god. And yeah, that is bad because Mick Kane said that he fucks up the whole world. Yay. Then we go back to Pomni and Kinger in that cellar with an unnecessary amount of barrels everywhere and scary dead human body with an extra convenient shotgun that has two loaded chills in it. How convenient. And um, uh, turns out this man is the same one who was talking in the tapes. He locked himself inside the cellar to escape the monster thingy and carried his shotgun with him and killed his wife out of fear and stuff. Wow, that is tragic. Yeah, just kidding, I don't care. Don't come alive. Okay, I won't. The joke is funny, honestly. Then Regina Rador or this thing and ambush from doors come in and Kinger is now brave and he shoots the two convenient shots at them and now we are in peace. Which is what I would be saying if I didn't know that the creature was actually one of God's angels. What? And yes, the classic stretched gut frame for because it is funny. Welcome to internet humor, my friend. I really like this type of humor. Then the tape finishes and uh, they go underground, or as they call it, hell for some reason, because why not? Because the next breath you take down there will be your last. Remember that, kids? Then we randomly cut to Ragatha and Gangle drinking tea with the wife of the guy who recorded the tape and they make a joke about men. You know how men are. Always having the silliest priorities. Wow, did not expect that. I am offended. Cancel this fucking show now. For those who do not understand humor, this is a joke. <laughs> I mean, come on, it is obvious. Then they try to leave and Kane tells them that they chose the pacifist route. But they can't leave until Uzi, Uzi huh? Until Pomni and Kinger come back, which makes me wonder what was the whole point of this whole adventure. If Pomni and Kinger did not go to the scary route, do they just drink tea with the wife and go out? What the heck is the point of all of this? Then we go back to the most sane duo ever again. There is a full room of salts for some reason and Kinger loves playing around with eyes and the, he throws his in the room to see better for some reason. Pretty cool actually, I like this usage of the environment and world and stuff. Then stupid Pomni goes inside and the souls possess her and now she is sin committing the silly with extra nice Hollywood teeth. And yeah, this is not just because I am a Murder Drones fan or anything. Goose works actually likes sin. So yeah, there's definitely some inspiration here. Kinger pulls her out of the room and then he decides to hit Pomni with a shotgun to get the souls out. Wait, was this a way to defeat sin all along? Oh my god, I am not funny. The souls then try to remind him of his wife, but, How's your wife Kinger? but Kinger keeps hitting Pomni because why not until the souls get out. Kinger, you know you shouldn't hit women, what are you doing? Oh my god, I need to stop doing stupid jokes. Then Kinger opens up to Pomni about his wife and how he likes her and how the darkness makes him comfortable because it reminds him of his wife. Cool, we finally get more Kinger backstory and development and also for Pomni too since she is listening and stuff. Though I think the scene kinda dragged on for too long, still it was pretty nice, I really like it honestly. And he says this. Seven years of computer science for this, huh? So it is confirmed that they are mostly developers of this virtual reality world thingy, which is cool reveal I guess. I don't know what they are gonna do with it after that though. He just wants me to suffer. Who is he and why does he want you to suffer? Kane, Jax, the manager, the president? I don't care honestly, unless they do something cool with it. Anyways, after that, remember when I said to remember the next breath you take will be your last? That is the solution to how to go through that room without being possessed? Yeah, mm, pretty cliche honestly. You know what is probably more cliche? The hold your breath thing in the beginning is the solution too. And since they said Kinger glows when he holds his breath, they now have a convenient walking light source. The idea is not bad by any means at all. It is cool how they bring up something very random later in the episode. It is just that this is used by a lot of kids shows. A lot of them use the same trick. They show something very random at the beginning. And people think it is just character development that stuff but no it is actually tied to the solution of the problem of the episode which in my opinion is pretty lazy and childish i don't know because not everything has to have a reason behind it you know pure character development and world building is 
really good even if it was never brought up afterwards or at least you could make this plot line or something relevant later in the show i don't know what i am exactly complaining about it is just that this mention the solution of the problem in the beginning of the episode is kind of boring honestly i don't know i think it's lazy and stuff it is used by many kids shows so that's probably why i hate it even though it might be a good idea i have no idea why it's just me complaining about anything that exists anyway also cool mention the music we played in that scene is pretty cool but it makes the fandom have high expectations of those two characters Anyways, back to Therapist Rubel with Kane talking about the Wild West for no reason at all. Then he brings them back and says this. Yelling milkmaids! Okay, away from the weird naming that is, I think a lot of you saw the Polish dub of that. No i jak tam moje skibity sigmy? Yeah, that, that is real. How did Glitch approve of this? I, I mean, it means nothing in Polish. It, it's just the word that I refuse to say. Never mind, this episode is the worst episode. I hate it. Fuck you, Lanky Box. And then Pony looks like she has emotions towards Kinger. Please do not even dare do it. And well, that was the episode for the most part. So overall, what do I think about it? Well, I think it is pretty nice actually. The best one so far, of course. The horror is really cool. The comedy is great also. And I really like the references to old internet memes. And the animation is also great. Of course, it is glitch productions. Also, the plot and storytelling is really good honestly for the most part a big improvement from previously character development was also a step up definitely and i don't know what to say more uh, i don't have more stuff to complain about um i would just give the episode an 8.5 out of 10 mm, yeah it is really good not the best thing but it's amazing that's all what i am gonna say i am not a reviewer duh so th thanks for watching this dumb video, I guess. Bye. Oh my god, I need therapy. <laughs>